You would think with a popular driver like Ryan Blaney winning the Coke 600 yesterday and snapping a long winless streak, that that would be the talk that we're all going on about. But no. Instead, we're talking about Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin. Though, I guess we could be doing worse and talking about another Ross Chastain incident. But this time, it's for, honestly, a very egregious incident right here. Left of your screen. The inside of Chase. Gets loose. You see him lift out of the gas. The flames crowded Chase. Got into him. May saw some retaliation Man. there. Or did Keslowski get into the left rear corner of Elliott there? I saw Elliot, tried to you check see up. Elliot lose his nose. Yeah, gonna be honest, that is pretty terrible. Honest to God, it's really, really bad, and it's something that should be inexcusable in NASCAR. Elliot clearly right hooked Denny Hamlin directly into the outside wall. He did it as payback. He was mad. Again, I think understandably mad but still not to the point that it's okay to send someone head first at full speed into the outside safer barrier. And for this, I am gonna echo what a lot of people say, he should be suspended. And for a couple reasons. One, it's a dangerous action. Something like that should not be overlooked by fans or NASCAR alike. And I think people really, really overestimate just how safe these cars are over time, we haven't had injuries, and it seems like fans and drivers alike think they can get away with whatever the hell they want. They can't. Something bad is going to happen if this is allowed to stay and be done over time. There's a precedent for this. Bubba Wallace last year crashed Kyle Larson. It was egregious. It was gross, disgusting, everything that you could describe it with. And... He got suspended for a race. Now, at the time, I will admit, I thought he should have been suspended the last three races of the season. It's something that is inexcusable. And if the precedent hadn't been set at one race, I'd say Chase Elliott should be suspended multiple races for it. I think it is absolutely over the line, and it's something that NASCAR needs to put their foot down on, get in the room with the kids, and be the adult on. Because this is terrible absolutely terrible. And you look at the huge outcry as well. There were some people I know who are diehard Chase Elliott fans calling him out on this. When your own fans, when some that are even local to your town that you grew up in are calling you out and saying what you did is wrong, it's wrong. And that is not a justification for a penalty, but it shows that pretty much everyone could see what was going on and you would have to be blind not to. Denny Hamlin brought out the SMT data showing where his steering was and how it was pretty damn clear that nothing was broken and he did it on purpose. Oh, and Denny also went off on his podcast saying this. And, you know, he, he was having a day anyway, in his opinion, and he threw a little temper tantrum and decided to hook a left on us down the straightaway. And not only straightaway, but the dog leg. Like I hit head on, not sideways like the the worst part of the racetrack that i could possibly hit so um i don't know we've seen this i've seen this with him in the past you know when he got pissed off when larson kind of drove him up in the fence at california larson's leading the race at the end he intentionally caused a caution there trying to screw larson over his teammate and then when harvick and him got into it he came in where's harvick i'm gonna help my teammate out blocked harvick so Kyle Larson could win like this is just this, this is bullshit and so you know I don't mind Chase Elliott fans some of them are, are sane most of them are not uh even when you got the Dawsonville pool room saying oh boy we need a substitute driver next week you probably know you f***ed up you know like I, you, there's no explanation that he could possibly give which he didn't of t reason for hanging a left you know, he obviously didn't want to admit it. He did the, oh, I can't hear you, sorry. And then, uh, sorry, I can't hear what you're saying, but yeah, I, oh, my car just couldn't drive it. Bullshit. The f wheels were dead straight. Even after we crashed and, like, destroyed our he goes down the back straightaway, and you look at both tires, front tires are pointed the correct direction. Uh, and I pointed out in the data that I tweeted that once he got into the wall, there was nothing wrong with his car. He He's turned the wheel back straight like he was going down the straightaway, and, and you can tell by data whether you've got toe link damage or not. So you can tell that basically if your line is skewed, 
uh, one direction or another where you have to turn it left, or turn it right, whether you've been a toe link or done significant damage. For God's sakes, Tyler Reddick pounded the wall twice as hard as he did and didn't hurt his car. Everyone hits the wall. But he threw a hissy fit, and he just hung a left on us in the most dangerous part of the part of the racetrack that you possibly could. And it ended my day in his, and in my opinion, he shouldn't be racing next weekend because NASCAR set a precedent last year. on. Now, some may think that I'm a Denny Hamlin fan or I'm a Chase Elliott hater. I'm going over the line and I'm obviously just targeting Chase, but I don't think that is the case at all with where I'm going with this because I personally think that Chase Elliott should be held to a very high standard, a standard that unfairly or fairly should be given to every driver that is of high stature of popularity and high stature of talent and results. He's a champion. He is the 2020 champion. Make all the Mickey Mouse memes you want. He rightfully won the championship under the system that was given. And because of that, he is a different level of NASCAR driver. He is definitely one of the 50 to 75 greatest of all time easily. He should be on that list. He is a multi-time winner. He is consistently a top five to 10 driver in the points every single year of his career. Maybe not this one because of the injury, but still is always up front. And because of that, he should be held to a standard as an ambassador to the sport. He is the most popular driver. He is somebody who can change the way that the entire fan base sways on different issues or on how they view a race or an incident or whatever. We've seen it with this, where tons of Chase Elliott fans did call him out, but also tons of them were trying to find every excuse under the sun to get their favorite golden boy out of the way with this. And I don't think that the golden boy comments for the most part are valid on NASCAR's sake, but when it comes to his fans, they were definitely apparent in the way that they were commenting about this. And you know what? Being a champion, being a most popular driver, being one of the best talent-wise and results-wise out there, whether unfair or not, he should be held to that higher standard because he represents the sport as a whole. Now, whether or not they penalize him is the big question. I think he should be. They did the one race suspension for Bubba, which is, I think, what they should do with this one. And it should not be something like a points penalty or monetary fine. He's already far enough back in the points. It's just going to make him stay in that must-win scenario that he's in. And money... Yeah, I think it might mean a lot, but it's not going to mean the end of the world for him. It's not like Hendrick Motorsports and Chase Elliott and Napa are dying for cash right now. NASCAR needs to send a statement about what the law is. You cannot get away with it no matter who you are, most popular driver or most polarizing driver. He should be treated exactly the same, and that is that. But what if they don't send this penalty? Well, I think NASCAR is easily accused of favoritism. And there are some reasons I think that they may not give this suspension out. For instance, look at the TV ratings when Chase Elliott was out compared to when he's in. Yeah, the ratings aren't exactly the greatest nowadays in NASCAR, but they weren't going down when Elliott came back, but they were down double digits for every race that Elliott was out. Is NASCAR really going to want to maybe put that up to another challenge again with Gateway, a race and a track that has seemed to be a success in year one and is well on its way to being a sellout success for year two? I don't know about that. And you, we've seen it in the past where drivers like Dale Jr. and Jeff Gordon have right hook drivers into the field or outside walls before and they either get a slap on the wrist or they get, well, a slap on the wrist but in different ways. Look at Jeff Gordon, especially in 2012, right hooking Clint Boyer into the outside wall and then going on the next week to win at Homestead. NASCAR should not play blatant favoritism with this because it sets a dangerous precedent that some drivers can get away with bloodthirsty looking actions. And that is just not fair at all. It's not fair to NASCAR fans. It's not fair to really the integrity of the sport. And any fan that would want to call Chase Elliott Golden Boy has every justification to do so if NASCAR does not take action on this. And I'm just going to finish on that. Chase Elliott lost track of both the short term and the big picture. Short term is just to go on with your race. Big picture is the fact that he was well within striking distance still of making up all the points on the cut line and making the playoffs even off points if he doesn't win. 
Now, he's probably in a must win, especially if the suspension is done. It's just utterly ridiculous. I, can't, I cannot believe we're having this conversation. But with that, I'm going to pass it on to you and ask you whether you think Chase Elliott should be suspended or not. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm sure it'll remain completely civil. And uh, while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for continued support. Also, be sure to watch the NR Cup Series tonight on IDK Players Channel at Michigan with COTs and the NASCAR Weekly Podcast on Wednesday night, tomorrow night on Danny B Talks channel. So until next time, have a good one.